the actual game. This is a live game engine over here. And he's created a network connection into his live game. And he's basically going to create this game you know, on, on the fly. You can see some of these additional buildings. He just dragged a whole new block of them in there. Now what I think he's going to do is probably go put some lights in there. Oh, this is a brand new building. So there's like a kind of a futuristic building to start changing what it looks like. There's some lighting. So this is a little bit ex extreme. We want to just highlight so, so you can see what he was doing. And he can even adjust what he sees. He's sliding it around over there. What you see is this will actually slide around in real time. So again, this is something the developers just haven't had. The other point I should make out is a lot of the guys develop for Xbox 360. Are you on? You want to talk a little about what's going on in here? Yeah, so uh, this is a, a quick scene that we put together in about a week. Uh, we have a lot of post effects in this and around to different passes. One of the things you'll see here, you'll see some lens ghosting effects from bright lights. Uh, we have the flares, uh, there's emissive textures. So this, this particular scene, which we'll show a little bit later, has around 200 light sources in it. So with deferred, it's really easy for us to toss lots of lights into the scene. Uh, and again, this was fairly quickly put together. So if we'll go ahead and pause the shot here, and then we can quickly show how many lights are in the scene. So all these red, all those red spheres are just the bounding boxes, and then all the labels here, they, these are showing every single light that's in the scene right now. So there are close to 200 lights in this scene. So it's a fur naturally handles that, that quite well. And so now we'll show you a couple of the render targets that are associated with this deferred render. So here we have the normal buffers. So we have a, a normal buffer where we're computing normal for every pixel, and this allows us to do some interesting lighting. And here's the depth spec buffer. And then if we go back, we'll show you one of the uh, other post-processing effects. So here, one of the neat things we can do with um, this deferred render is that we can make our lights emit, and we have this nice full-screen bloom effect as so we're doing this, this emissive material. And so we're going to continue on and let the camera continue its path, uh, and then we're going to show off some of the, the bullet physics that we're going to draw blobs, and we'll use the tessellation to procedurally generate all of the new the new fractures. And we'll so, zoom in on some of that. Go for it. Well, and some of the things we're showing here, we're showing we've got basically fracture that we offer the fracture in Maya, and then we can use bullet physics to actually simulate these fractured objects. But then also, when you do this fracture, you have a lot of large chunks, but you'd actually like to add some more detail. So we're using Takahiro's rigid body particle system to add a little bit more debris into the system. Uh, but as you were mentioning, one of the problems with you know, all this debris is that we would like some variation, but we don't want to have to have an artist spend all their time uh, doing the debris. So you can see these, all these objects that are very bumpy, we're actually on the fly tessellating these models and then adding perla noise to them to make them look more like rubble. But one of the neat features here is that artists didn't have to do anything. They basically did a, uh, a model, we fractured up some pieces using an automatic tool, and then at one time with no artist intervention, uh, we could use this noise function to add turbulence to our models so that we actually get nice variation for each different chunk of the rigid body particles. We can have infinite variability with very little work. By simulating these particles, I mean, you can do hundreds and thousands of times more particles than you could on a CPU. This is, as we mentioned, all done in direct compute on the GPU. Thousands of particles interacting with thousands of objects. It's a, it's a pretty phenomenal budget to be able to play with.